Okay, so let's start with allergic reactions, anaphylactic reactions. You can see through the pictures of the different things that take place. You have some sort of, uh, probably maybe a, even a localized reaction here on the chest, even though it's big. It, it's still a, a, it still could be considered a localized reaction. Okay. This is a problem because this puffy face and these lips, that gets into more of an airway concern. Okay, the same way over here with the tongue. Uh, this gets into airway concerns. The patient can't actually swallow their own spit. And so that gets to be uh, a problem. I've seen, seen that before with someone allergic to antibiotics and their tongue swelled up. I gave him a Yonkers and <laughs> turned it on in, in the hospital and he sat there and he suctioned himself out till they uh, put him to sleep and intubated him until this allergic reaction uh, went away. But there's several things that takes place in allergic reaction. Most of these things that you see is the response from a histamine release. And so the histamine in a scent in it not by itself but other things with the histamine release causes the anaphylactic reaction uh, I bring this up hives everybody uses the word hives I don't know anybody that uses eutycaria it's such a weird word but so they break out in hives you notice here that they have these sort of welts the swollen parts to them okay and then the redness sort of in here and this would be an allergic uh, a localized reaction when we review localized reactions in just a minute keep this picture in mind maybe we'll flip back to it <clears throat> if I have my slides in the right order oh good I do so this could be <clears throat> just a, lo a localized reaction means localized reaction means that it doesn't go anywhere it's staying in one spot it's not just even though it's large it's covering the mid back it's still in one spot, right? And so there's no trouble breathing. There's no wheezing. There's no change in pressure. No, there's no change in pulse. There's nothing except that the guy has a big spot on his back that itches like crazy, and it's red. Okay? So a localized reaction is easily taken care of without intervention from us, okay, or intervention from the hospital. The, the person could go to Walmart, buy some Benadryl cream, put some Benadryl cream on this, okay? And then uh, that will help with the itch. And then you have the swelling part. And then probably that night, what I would do when I was at Walmart, I'd buy some hydrocortisone cream, steroid cream, and then put some steroid cream over the welts and the redness for the inflammation. Okay. There's no streaking involved in it. Like if that was an arm or a leg, an extremity, and you do have a localized reaction, but there's streaks involved, that's a problem because it's been it, that reaction has went systemic. If those streaks run up the the vessels, that requires intervention, med medical intervention. Okay, more than Walmart. But this localized reaction. It's a very simple reaction. You can you can mark the borders of the of the redness if you want with, with an uh, ink pen and to make see if it grows any if it spreads anymore. But remember the most important part: no trouble breathing, right? no wheezing, no streaking, uh, no no tachycardia, nothing. Just big red spot that itches okay. so the uh, the other thing that you could do if you wanted to uh, you could take PO Benadryl you could go 25 50 milligrams of uh, Benadryl and uh, take oral Benadryl and do the same thing except for the inflammation remember the Benadryl doesn't do anything with inflammation so before I took those Benadryl tablets that would knock me out to the next day, okay, I would put some hydrocortisone cream on this and uh, take the Benadryl. 
right, so that's a that's a localized reaction. Not a big deal. Uh, the reason that EMS or the hospitals get involved in my, these mild local reactions is just due to the lack of public education. They just don't know any better. Okay. Sometimes it's not really their fault. They just don't know. The next type of reaction that we look at is a moderate, what I call a moderate reaction. And this is where the patient becomes short of breath. This is where you're going to start picking up the wheezing. That, that uh, those histamines are going to cause bronchoconstriction and you have a, a mucus production uh, along with this. So you're going to get constriction and through that constriction produce a wheeze. So when you auscultate the lungs, you see a wheeze. This is where on the EMT side, okay, that you would do, use the EpiPen. You take, your, you take the EpiPen out, remove the cap, okay, stab it that big thigh, that muscle thigh, hold it for 10 seconds and then release it. So this is where you would want to start considering your, your EpiPen as well during this moderate reaction. You still have the other things. You still have the redness and the swelling and uh, the, you know, the, the welts and stuff and the hives, but you uh, here you get the patient gets short of breath and it requires medical intervention. The, the next one is the severe allergic reaction or anaphylactic shock and with all the shocks, at least on a, a written test, it's, they're, gonna, they're telling you that the patient's in shock by the systolic blood pressure less than 100. So you got this guy, he got stung by a bee, he's having trouble breathing, he has audible wheezes, uh, he's hypotensive, he's in anaphylactic shock, okay? So you still do the EpiPen, but then you have to deal with the blood pressure problem. So the severe allergic reaction or an anaphylactic shock, remember anaphylactic shock is a distributive shock. There's no loss in fluid. What I call those kinds, the K-I-N-S, there's several different things that are released that causes vasodilation and the vessels dilate to a point where they can't distribute the blood. That's that sort of way that I remember distributive shock. The vessels are dilated and you have a drop in pressure and you get into what's called the mean arterial pressure and there's a drop in the mean arterial pressure. The mean arterial pressure is what? The pressure that is required to push the blood through the vessel. So this mean arterial pressure drops and the blood sort of, it, it keeps circulating. If it didn't circulate, what would happen? Heart would stop. Death. <laughs> yeah, it died. So, I mean, the blood is circulating, but it, it has a, the body's having a problem distributing the blood. That's where you get distributive shock from. It, it almost pulls instead of, it's, forced through or pumped through and that's mainly due to a drop in the mean arterial pressure. Okay, so EMT wise, we can treat this moderate respiratory problem with epinephrine, right? We give the EpiPen. If the patient's in anaphylactic shock and then we would just treat the patient for shock the way that we can. It, you know, we lay the patient supine, evaluate the need for oxygen, keep them warm, right? Rapid transport. Does you the know, patient have to be unconscious to give a heavy pump? No, no, no. You definitely wouldn't want to wait till they're unconscious. Yeah, you'd, matter of fact, I'm glad you brought that up. That you want to really try to administer this EpiPen within just a couple minutes. That's why when most, most people, anybody carry an EpiPen or have an EpiPen, no, uh, most people that have these different type of allergies carry that EpiPen so when they, they get stung by the bee or they come in contact with peanut butter or whatever they're allergic to, they notice to take that cap off and 
stab their thigh with it uh, because the onset is very, very rapid as far as going through where you get short of breath, you know, you feel like your throat's closing up, right? And again, sort of back to that localized reaction, that's another one. There's no tongue swelling, there's no feeling that your throat's closing up, okay, any of that. But you say the person comes in contact with what they're allergic to, and so they, get, they start getting short of breath, the anxiety's going to go up because they know that they're allergic to that. They're going to take their EpiPen out and give their self Epi before their, their throat starts to swell and close off, okay? And their pressure drops. Okay. Any, any questions there on those three types of allergic reactions? Pretty straightforward. Okay, so your treatment is just like we've been talking about, epinephrine. Now, you can give epi in a, like a clinical environment. You can draw it up in a syringe and give it uh, 0.3 milligrams subcutaneous. It's the sub-Q, but that's what the EpiPen does. The only difference is the EpiPen costs like 100 bucks, and that uh, dose of epinephrine costs like 30 cents if you draw it out of a vial, okay? Just depends. Okay, so you give them the epinephrine, and the epinephrine, what that's going to do, it's, it's considered a beta drug. It's a beta 2 drug. Wait, remember beta, beta 2, two lungs, so it's going to affect the lungs. So what epinephrine does is it causes bronchodilation. We're offsetting that bronchoconstriction that's caused by the kinds, okay, and it causes vasoconstriction because of the fact that the vessels are going to have a tendency to dilate. So we use the beta-2 in here to cause bronchodilation, but epinephrine is also an alpha drug, so that alpha molecule will cause vasoconstriction. It's a beta-1 drug, so we can anticipate what? Very good, an increase in heart rate. So we know that it's going to increase the heart rate. It's going to increase the heart rate. It's going to increase the blood pressure because it, the vasoconstriction that it, that it causes. And like I said, the, sort of the peak time to administer this, two to three minutes in that moderate allergic reaction. Depending on your scope of practice, you can administer Benadryl, 25 to 50 milligrams. Uh, a lot of protocols give it, you give 25 IM intramuscular, that way it works longer, and then you give 25 IV that's going to take, that's going to work faster. Remember, Benadryl doesn't stop the release of histamine, it only chem chemically blocks uh, that receptor, that histamine receptor. So it's a, a so that the, the histamine can't, can't uh, bind up with the cell is one way to uh, explain it. But Benadryl uh, chemically blocks that. It is an antihistamine, but it does it by blocking that receptor site. So we give it IM, IV. Uh, again, depending on your scope of practice, you can give vasopressors. If the patient goes in anaphylactic shock, you can give a medicine like uh, dopamine. It's a good vasopressor. Uh, Levofed is a pure alpha medication, and it's a better vasopressor. But when you start giving a vasopressor, and you would give this IV, when you start doing that, you're taking away from something. So it's raising the blood pressure, but all these, all these vasopressors take away like blood flow uh, to the kidneys. It's where it usually uh, ends up being. You, you really start shutting their kidneys down. But it's okay because of the fact that we need to get their blood pressure up before they, they die, right? So we're going to 
It's a give and take, but that's your standard treatment for an allergic reaction. Uh, moderate, beginning with the epinephrine, to severe down to the vasopressor. EMT wise, we would just uh, do the EpiPen and uh, treat for shock, rapid transport. Questions? Yes. So for an EpiPen, like, how many doses are in, are in the pen before it runs out? One. So only one, so you gotta keep replacing the EpiPen? Yeah, once it's used, it's, they give it to schools to show them what an EpiPen, used EpiPen looks like. They, they don't reload them. And there's only one dose. And depending on your protocol, you might be able to give another dose of ep epi, okay? Uh, but you wouldn't be able to use an epi pen. And the, the ampule of epinephrine comes in one milligram, so we give 0.3 milligrams, so in that one ampule, there's actually three doses of epinephrine in there. But that's really more of a protocol issue. We would sort of in book land we only give one dose. But you could give, depending on the factors, you could give another dose of epinephrine. In fact, in anaphylactic shock, uh, I've given epinephrine at a different concentration uh, IV before to cause that, va to cause that vasoconstriction. All right. Just sort of a short one there. Uh, any any other questions over allergic reactions? Okay.